You just give me the count. Welcome to church this morning, and whether you've just stumbled across us on Facebook as you're scrolling through, or you're a church regular, let me just welcome you to church online. We've got a great service this morning, uh, we've got like, another kids talk, we've got a great worship session, Pastor Josh will, will be preaching again, and um, we're also going to have a great time of prayer and share. So if you've got something that you would like us to be praying for, then please email us at community at cansbaptist.org.au. Or you can send um, a message through to Pastor Josh's phone, which you can find that number at the bottom of your email. I just want to encourage you from a passage, before we head to our worship service, I want to encourage you from a passage from Psalm 34. And it says... I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be on my mouth. My soul will make its boast in the Lord. The humble will hear it and rejoice. I magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. Now that comes from King David, and he's talking about his time when he was before a guy called Akish, and David had to pretend to be a madman to get away from this guy who was going to kill him. Some of us at home, or wherever you are right now, might be feeling a little bit crazy, might be going a bit stir-crazy, but David here is giving praise to the Lord in all things. He says, let us never stop giving praise to the Lord. So as we come to the time of worship now, let us quiet in our heart, quiet in our soul so that we can sing these praises to our God. Let's give these things to God. Father, I thank you so much that you love us no matter where we're at. And I pray that with all the circumstances that we're going through, that you will just hear our praises. Hear our soul cry out to you, Lord, and just to be able to glorify your name. And Father, I pray now that wherever we are, that whether we're at home or where, whether we're still laying in bed, Lord, I pray that we will be intentional with the words and the, and, and the songs that we sing to you. Father, may your name be glorified. I just give all these things to you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Sí 
through let me encourage you throw the week aside throw everything aside that would inhibit and, and hinder you as you worship God this morning let's sing of a God that, that is so much bigger than we can possibly comprehend
understand me You understand me You understand me, God You understand me So I throw all my cares before you My doubts and fears don't scare you You're bigger than I thought you You're bigger than I thought So I stop all negotiations With the God of all creation You're bigger than I thought you were You're bigger than I thought you were Don't scare you. You're bigger than I thought you were. You're bigger than I thought. So I stop all negotiations to the God of all creation. You're bigger than I thought you were. You're bigger than I thought. So I throw all my cares before you. My doubts and fears don't scare you. Bigger than I thought you were. Bigger than I thought. So I stop all negotiations with the God of all creation. You're bigger than I thought you were. 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 You're bigger than. than I thought you were.
morning, kids and families, and it's good to be back with you again for our first lesson of Term 2. And back with us again is our favourite, Arnie Jane. Hi, kids. It's so great to be back with you for another lesson. Hi, Arnie Jane. Hey, what have you been up to during the week? I'm starting to adjust to this lockdown stuff, and I'm using it to help get things in order. Uh, what do you mean by that, Arnie Jane? Well, my life was so busy just a few weeks ago, and while it is still busy today, I'm able to focus on things that I've always thought was important, but never put some time into them. Ah, what things were you busy doing before, Honey Jane? Well, I was busy going to watch my niece JJ and nephew Travis playing sport, going out to a restaurant for dinner, going to the movies with my friends and family, and going camping for the weekend and other stuff fun like that. Well, that stuff actually sounds really fun and something that you'll be really enjoying. So, but you said before that you're really enjoying getting things back in order. Does that mean that these things were not fun and not in order, Arnie Jane? Not at all. I'm really looking forward to doing all those things again. However, now that I have time for other things, I have found them important as well. Ah, you mean like playing the Xbox for twice as long as you were before? And chilling out on the couch and watching a Netflix series all night. Is that what we are doing, Honey Jane? Well, those things are fun for a little bit, but I have really enjoyed spending some time with my family and eating around the dinner table together. Yeah, those things are really important. And we should be doing them far more often than what we did before. Um, so when you go back and you start socialising and you can go back and do the things that we used to be able to do, does that mean that you're not going to be able to do the things that you want to do before or had fun doing before? I'm really looking forward to doing all those things again, but now I know how important it is to spend good quality time with my family, so I'm going to be doing that as well. Yeah, that's really good, Aunty Jane. And I think that we can all learn a lesson from that. If we can learn to take some time and sit around the table and just spend some good quality time with our family, that would be really good and a really great way to build up our family relationships. Hey, Aunty Jane, do you know what today is? Is it the 36th anniversary of the Chernobyl nuclear disaster? <laughs> um, I think that's right. The Chernobyl, is that what you said? Oh, very good. Um, that's, that's a very important event in history, but that's not what I'm thinking of. Is, is there another um, date that happened today? Like something that important? Come on, you get it. Is it also the 36th anniversary of Arnold Schwarzenegger's marrying of JFK's niece? Oh, well... That is quite interesting that those two events happen on the same day, but that's not actually the important event that I'm thinking of. Do you have anything else? Like, this is a really important day, and it's actually the first lesson of Kids Church for Term 2. Oh, that's right. What are we learning about this term, Mr Jeremy? Well, last week we looked at how Jesus can save us from our sins and then how we can help us to not sin anymore, and also how we can protect us from our sin. So this term, we're going to be looking at how Jesus helps protect us from sin. That would be so good if Jesus could just put up a shield and block all the sin from affecting us. Yeah. Jesus has given us something, some armour, to be able to stand up against him and his evil plans. Is there just one piece of armour that Jesus gives us? You know what? Jesus gives us seven pieces of armour that he tells us to put on so that we can defeat devil's plans. How good is that? Does that mean that there are Christians who don't wear their armour? Yeah, that's right. You see... 
people who love Jesus, they have a choice whether to put the armor on or to leave it off. Honey Jane, I've actually brought along an object lesson to be able to help you understand what that looks like. You want to see it? All right, let's have a go. See you guys. So I've got two oranges here, Honey Jane. Whoa. I've got one completely unpeeled orange, and that represents someone who has got their armor on. I've got the other orange. It's not a Christian, but they've left all their armor off and haven't put it on. We've got here some water, and this represents the devil's evil plans. And so the devil tries to get us and tries to bring us down. So let's see what happens to the person who doesn't have their armor on. So when they go into the against the devil's evil plans, Whoa. you see that they actually sink and they're defeated and they're drawn down and they're actually, they don't rise up. But when somebody who has all their armor on, like this Christian here, you'll see what happens, honey Jane. They will go in to the same water. But you see, what happens here is that they Whoa. rise up and that they are not defeated and they can actually beat the battle against the devil and his evil plans. That's so good, Aunty Jane. Now, you will notice that all these pieces of armor down here, you will see that there are many different pieces of armor. So we've got the helmet. We're going to be learning about that. We've got artillery. We're going to be learning about that one. We've got the chest plate. We're going to be learning about that one as well. And all the other one, we've got the boots. These are all different parts of the armor, Aunty Jane. We've got the sword, and we've got the shield, and we've got the belt. The belt's the first one we're going to learn about next week. So, Aunty Jane, does that help you understand why it's important for us to put on that armor of God that he has asked us to wear? Yes, I now understand that if we don't wear the armor, then we will sink and we will be defeated. But if we wear the armor, then we will rise up and win all the battles. That's exactly right. You got it, Aunty Jane. Um, so this term, we're going to be looking at all these different parts. That sounds great. I really look forward to the lesson about swords. Oh, yeah. Swords are great, aren't they? They're really cool. So, well, I, I hope, Aunty Jane, that... You know, you've learned some lessons today. I hope the kids and families have learned a great lesson today and about we're excited about what this term is going to bring for us. Well, Annie Jane, thanks for coming in today and helping us with the lesson. Thanks for inviting me, Mr. Jeremy. See you, kids, and I hope you have fun with the rest of the lesson. Bye! Bye, Annie Jane. Hey, kids and families, thanks again for watching this um, object lesson. And I just pray that you will be able to Learn what it is to put on the armor of God. That's what we're going to learn about the whole term, what it means to put on each and every one of these pieces of armor. Let's pray as we go into this next part of our service. Father, I thank you so much that you saved us. You saved us from the penalty of sin. And you've also given us some protection to fight against the devil and his evil plans. Father, I pray that as we look at each and every piece of this armor and see how important it is to wear, I pray that we will all learn just how much you love us and how you want us to fight well for you. And Father, I pray that as we go out into this week of where we don't really know what's happening, where, where school is hard, where work is hard for the parents, Lord, and where we're still a bit uncertain about things. Father, I pray that we will start to learn about this armor and put it on so that we can defeat those evil plans that the devil has set against us. And I just pray that you will help us do these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, bye kids and families. Enjoy the service. Hey church, welcome back. And let me just say how great Annie Jane is. She is so good, right? Give me a thumbs up on Facebook if you can agree with me on that one. And sorry about the technical difficulties there. We are continually trying to provide a great service, but sometimes it just doesn't work out the way we want to. Um, hey, kids, Kids Church does start today. Um, on the church website, you'll find under the CBC Kids, you'll find all the materials that you need. So there's actually three videos there for you to watch, and that'll be introducing the, our uh, information and what we're going through for, for term one. 
So, or for term two. So have a look at that. There's also, some th there's also three activity sheets. So download them, print them out, and fill them in too. If you can post them on CBC Kids and Families, that would be great. If you don't have a printer or if you don't have the ability to be able to get those sheets, then let me know and I can print some out and bring them around for you. Now, normally if we were here at the service, this would be the time that we would actually collect our tithes and offerings. So we're going to spend some time this morning to do that. Um, it's pretty easy to do. If you actually go to our church website, you'll be able to just click on the link and you'll be able to, to donate that way. So I'm going to pray as we, as we do give our tithes and offerings to the Lord. Father, I thank you for all that you've given us. I thank you for being so faithful to us. And I pray that we can be faithful to you even though we are experiencing difficulties, Lord. Our, our hope is in you. And I pray that we will continue to just be obedient to you, Lord. Father, I thank you that you love us and that you want us to be able to just live in obedience to you and also to be able to provide this great service and to be able to keep this church going, Lord. I just pray that you will help this church community to be able to just give of their tithes and offerings so that we can continue to have church together. I just pray for these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Um. There have been some great announcements during the week. So Clint and Jessica Woodman have had their first child, Nathan, and that is such good news. Now, they would both like you to continue to pray for them as they learn about how to do this whole child-rearing thing. But let me just encourage you and remind you that please do not visit them. Um, just keep them in your prayers, and that would be great. Thank you. Look, there are other church events that are happening throughout the week. Um, it's easy to actually find out what's happening. You can go to our website or just uh, hit subscribe through our Facebook page and you'll be able to just keep an eye on what's happening. On Tuesdays, we drop our, our podcast. So if you want to watch or listen to that, that would be great. That's just Pastor Josh, Pastor Dora and myself just sitting around a table and we go through the events of the week and we dig a bit deeper into the sermon and so it's actually a really good um, time to reflect and just to hear what's on our hearts. Wednesday morning prayer is still happening, but it's a bit different because you have to phone in to be able to be involved in that. And if you would like to know more about how to do that, you need to contact Maybelline Wong. So let me encourage you to do that. Um, last Wednesday evening, we had our first Zoom prayer um, meeting, that was actually really good. It was great to come together and pray with the church. So we'll be having more of those throughout from here on in. A Friday youth hangout is happening every week. So if you want to be involved in, in the youth group, if you're in high school, then just contact Pastor Jaira and he'll be able to, to hook you up to the, to the Zoom session for that. Um, if you have missed any of our services or if you would like to watch them again or see anything throughout the service, let me encourage you to go back to our website and you can watch it again or go through Facebook and you can do the same. Tonight we're going to be trialling something different and this is going to happen um, for an ongoing uh, short while. So we're going to be having conversations and digging a little bit deeper. And so I encourage you to, to come back and watch the service tonight, see Pastor Jaira and, and some others sitting on the couch, just engaging and engaging in the scriptures and seeing what it actually really means for them. Now we at the church, we have Zoom account, and so we would like to encourage you, if you would like to get, in, um, get a hold of that, because the paid Zoom account gives you more features and you can go for longer than 40 minutes without dropping out. Let, me, let us encourage you to um, get involved in that for your home group. And it's pretty easy to do that. You just email community at cantbaptist.org.au and we'll be able to schedule in um, so you can actually have a great home group and bob via Zoom. So if you haven't done that, it's actually really easy. So let me encourage you just to do that. We come now to a time where we can just pray as a church and, and bring these things before God. 
So we do have a few prayer points here that I need to make you aware of. Let's keep Clinton and Jessica in our prayers as they continue to go through um, bringing their, their, their child Nathan home. Um, due to Searle during the week, she had um, some heart complications and she's going to be having uh, a stress test tomorrow. So please keep her in your prayers. Um, John Parker, for those who are on the, on the, on the prayer chain, he had a fall and he thought that his arm was broken. It, it swelled up and, and the, the staff at the nursing home were so sure it was broken, but by the afternoon he was using his arm again and, and the swelling had gone down. It's still a bit sore, but that is so great. Just keep him in your prayers. Uh, Dawn Parker as well. We need to keep her in your prayers as well because she still can't go along and, and see John at the home. So let's keep them in your prayers. Uh, Charlie is, is giving thanks that he's able to go and visit Margaret for a short while and he's thankful because he understands that not everybody can, can have that like he does. And so he just wants to give thanks for that and we'll, we'll continue to keep them in your prayers. Carol Hinks. She needs to have um, a procedure done. She needs to have some stents put in um, into the main arteries of her heart. So we need to, to keep her in your prayers as she goes through that procedure. Jean Stewart, she had a, a turn during the week and she's just taking time at the moment to recover. Uh, Gary McGinty, he has got an inner ear infection that's causing him great discomfort. So please pray for him. There, there are others that are waiting for elective surgery that has been, that's been stopped for a while. So we need to keep them because they don't know what's happening or when they can actually go and, and have their surgery done. So let's give these things before our God. Father, I just, I just pray that you will, you will touch us with your heart, Lord. You will be able to just reach down and give us your peace, Lord. There are many things that, that we are experiencing from, from the joyful times of, of, of birth to having great discomfort and pain, Lord. I just pray that you will just give us your peace. Lord, all these things that we've talked about this morning, Lord, you care for each and every one of us. And I just pray that you will be exalted in all of this. Father, we love you as a church. We love you individually, Lord. I just pray that we will continue to seek your face, to be able to put our hope in you and to be able to glorify your name. Father, I pray that as the whole world suffers through this, that we will be that hope that people can see and ask why Lord why do we have this hope and we can always point it back to you and Father I just thank you that you are the same yesterday as today and you will be tomorrow Lord I just pray that we will know that we will have peace from that and that you will just continue to be our focus Lord I just bring all these things before you and I pray all these things in your son's mighty name. Amen. Well, cool. Thanks, Jeremy. Hey, everybody. Um, it's great to uh, be with you again this morning. I trust that uh, everyone's going well this Anzac Day weekend. Um, I, I don't know whether uh, what happened in your house yesterday morning, but uh, Tamsin and I went down at, at 6 o'clock to the, the end of our um, driveway and um, and our neighbours were out and uh, it, was, it was a little bit of a different day yesterday, Anzac Day you know, for me is, is, is usually um, I can be involved in some form of celebration um, or, or, or uh, reflection in that regard but it was just again a little bit different as, as I guess it is for everybody isn't it? But, um, but thanks for having me, and or us I should say, uh, in your lounge rooms um, again this morning. You know, we, we seem to be getting through this, all right? We seem to be get coming towards the end of it from all the, the things that the government uh, are saying, the advice that the government is giving us is that there is a light at the end of the tunnel. Now that, that might be a little bit away yet for us. 
Um, but we've got some hope. There's a glimmer of hope there that, uh, that things are going to resume um, at some point. Look, I hope you've had a good week as well. hope the kids have enjoyed uh, being at school. Um, whatever the classroom has looked like for them, I, I hope that uh, they've really enjoyed uh, being back at school and getting into their books again. Um, I was reading a story uh, this week uh, about a, a Polish soldier in World War II. His name was, was Witold Pilecki. Pilecki had been a decorated officer in, in the Polish-Soviet War in 1918. After the war, he, he moved to the, the Polish countryside where he married a schoolteacher. He had a couple of kids. He enjoyed riding his horse uh, and smoking cigars. Life was pretty simple. Life was pretty good for him. Um, then Hitler involved, uh, invaded Poland and, um, and the Soviets did the same and, and Poland lost its entire territory in little more than a month. More than a million people were dis displaced, all gone. Most went into Siberia, others were found in mass graves decades later. Pilecki fought in these battles against, uh, against both the Germans and the Soviets. And, and after the, their defeat, uh, uh, he and a, a fellow Polish officer started an, an underground resistance group in Warsaw. They called themselves the Secret Polish Army. In, in spring of 1940, they got wind of, of uh, the Germans building a massive prison complex outside some backwater town in the southern part of the country. The Germans named this new prison Auschwitz. By the summer of 1940, thousands of, of military officers and, and leading Polish nationals were disappearing from Western Poland. Fear arose among, among the, the resistance that, this, that the same mass incarceration that had occurred um, in the East under the Soviets was now on the menu in the West. Pilecki and his, his crew suspected that um, Auschwitz, um, a, a, a prison which was the size of a small town, was likely involved in the disappearance and, and, that, and that it might already house thousands of his countrymen and women. That's when Pilecki volunteered to sneak into Auschwitz. Initially, it was a rescue miss, uh, mission. Uh, he would allow himself to be arrested um, and, and once in the prison, he would organise uh, the other Polish soldiers. He would coordinate a, a, a mutiny and would break out of the prison camp. His superiors thought that he was mad and they told him as such or as much. Um, but as the weeks went on, the situation grew worse. Thousands of Poles were disappearing and Auschwitz was still a huge blind spot in, in the Allied intelligence work. Eventually, Pilecki's commanders relented. And one evening, for, for violating a curfew, he, was, he, he allowed himself to be caught and allowed himself to be arrested by the SS at a checkpoint in Warsaw. And soon he was on his way to Auschwitz. You know what? He's the only man to ever voluntarily enter a Nazi concentration camp. Once he got there, he reported that things were worse than they thought. Prisoners were routinely shot for minor transgressions. The manual labour was, was gruelling and endless. Uh, men were, were literally worked to death. But Pilecki, amongst all of this, had set up this, this espionage uh, operation in the camp. They were passing notes in, in, in laundry baskets. They were, uh, he'd organised a smuggling ring to bring in medicine and food and, and clothes. He built his own, own radio um, and, and somehow transmitted plans for an attack on the prison um, by the secret Polish army. Pilecki had brought hope to thousands of prisoners, to thousands of his countrymen. Over the course of, of, of a couple of years, he'd built an entire resistance unit in Auschwitz. His plan was a, a full-scale revolt within the camp, and, and with a little help from the outside, he believed that, that, he, that, that he could break out of the prison, overrun the undermanned SS guards, and, 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 and release tens of thousands of highly trained uh, guerrilla fighters into the wild. He, he sent plans to Warsaw and he waited. 
For months he waited. And for months he survived. But then came the Jews. First in buses and then on trains. Arriving in their tens of thousands, stripped of, of all their possessions and their, their dignity. They, 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 they filed into newly renovated shower barracks where they were, were gassed and their bodies then cremated. Pilecki's report to the, the outsiders or to the outside world became frantic. He said they're murdering tens of thousands of people every day, mostly Jews. Now, the death, call, the, death, the death toll, he said, could possibly be in the millions. He pleaded with the Polish army to, to liberate the camp. And he said if they couldn't, then at least, at least bomb it so they could destroy the gas chambers. But this, the secret Polish army thought that he was exaggerating. And, 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 and in, I guess in the, in the farthest reaches of their minds, nothing could be that bad. Pilecki was the first person to alert the world to the Holocaust. But even world leaders thought that things couldn't be as bad as he was saying. So with no one believing him, no one making plans to come, um, he made plans to escape. And he did one night, working late in the prison's bakery. Now after, after years of war, after years of torture and hard work and death and, and genocide, Pilecki never lost hope. Despite losing everything, in the end he lost even his own life. But in the end as he recounted all of the atrocities done by the Germans and by the Soviets, he still hoped for a free and independent Poland. Now why do I tell this story this morning? In church. Well, in our series on hope, I've been struck just by how much we, we have to be hopeful for. We, we have so much, so much opportunity, so little to really worry about compared to other parts of the planet. You know, our life expectancy is, is, in, the, is in the highest percentage of the world. You know, even if we're out of work, which, which some of us or some of you are, um, right now, is that our government has stepped in and will help us to make ends meet. So we have all that we need, yet as a society we seem to be lost. We seem to be without hope. Stories like Pilecki's should inspire us and, and give us hope. Not because of, of who they are, but because they show us that even in the midst of, of all the pain, all the misery, that hope can still be found. But for us, we've so many things to hope for, yet we chase after things that do not last. And it's affecting us mentally, spiritually, and physically. You know, God told of this a long time ago to, to, to Solomon, and, and it's, it's a passage that I've been wrestling with to understand throughout this past week. It's from Proverbs 13.12. And Proverbs 13.12 says, Hope deferred makes the heart sick. But a desire fulfilled is a tree of life. So hope deferred. Proverbs 13, 12. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. You know, um, in a book I was reading recently about hope, an example was used uh, from a medical journal um, to state that hopelessness is one of the major reasons for mental health issues like depression and anxiety in our world. They also noted that from, from suffering um, from depression, it had a, a, had a twofold increased risk of, of coronary um, arthur. Oh, gee, I wish I was like a doctor or something like that. You're all laughing at me at home. I know you are. It's arthur, atherosclerosis. Let's try saying that without a full mouth or with an empty mouth. It's pretty much a narrowing of the arteries. Again, I've, I said, we've got so much to hope for. Yet we as a society seem to be lost. We seem to be getting sick without hope. That The medical profession is proving that, that this verse from, from, from Proverbs is true. Hope deferred creates a, a, a diseased heart. And with a diseased heart, no one can, can confidently run life's race effectively. In fact, for, for many of us, the, the loss of hope is, is crippling us, 
making us middle, a little more than just spectators in this life. Now, I bring these thoughts out into the light because no one wants to be in pain. No one wants to be frustrated. No one wants to be disillusioned. We all want to live full lives. We want to live lives that are full of joy, full of enthusiasm, pleasure, joy, meaning. And I'm sure that that is what the Lord wants for us as well. Well, how do we get this way when we're without hope? How do we prevent this from happening? Well, many of the, the, the preachers and the commentators uh, make mention that, that hope deferred is really just an issue with impatience. You know, we defer hope because we think that whatever we hope for or whatever God has promised us, it's, it's just not going to happen. So we defer our hope. But that, for me, doesn't give a clear picture of the relationship that we have with God. Effectively, what some of these commentators might be sort of saying is that, is that God hasn't come through for us in time. And so we lose hope because of him, and therefore we get sick because of him. And that interpretation for me just doesn't sit right. See, our God is a loving father who knows how to give good things to his children. He works for the good of those who love him and who has been called according to his purpose. He is for us. He is not against us. So why would he make us lose hope when he is the God of hope? See, sometimes, yes, we, we have to wait. But as Solomon also writes in, in Lamentations 3, 25 and 26, he says, The Lord is good to those who wait for him. The soul who seeks him. It is good that one should wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. See, others have also written that... that it, it is also circumstantial. You know, sometimes things happen in our lives, like global pandemics. Maybe there's a death of a loved one, a failed relationship. Maybe there's money issues. Maybe there's a, a betrayal, rejection. Maybe those circumstances can, can make us defer or, or, or lose hope because these things didn't turn out the way that we wanted, maybe the way we prayed for, maybe the way we believed for. But for me, hope deferred is not about not getting or, or waiting for something. It's about hoping in the wrong things to be fulfilled. We hope for wealth and prestige or health and prosperity or we hope for notoriety and for accolades. These things don't fulfill. What we do is we defer what God would have for us or something um, for something else which is not his best. We choose a lesser option. We, we actually defer what is best for us, for the lesser things, and expend our, our energy chasing them down. Hence why we're not fulfilled. Hence why we're not healthy. So the question, are you living in deferred hope? Are you just going through the motions of your faith? Do you find yourself saying the things um, or, or saying the right things and doing the right things and um, all the while you're just disinterested, you're empty, you feel lifeless? So you may be suffering from hope deferral. If the statement, God is going to come through for you, is met with doubt or questioning, then you're probably experiencing some level of hope deferred. Experiencing hope deferred doesn't make us bad. It doesn't make us weak or unspiritual. None of us go through this life without, without facing some type or, or, or some form of adversity, but hope deferred is not good for us. It's not good for our soul. But waiting patiently on the Lord is good for us. And we all know that, um, that, that well-known verse in Isaiah 40 that says, but they who wait from the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and, and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. 
And then Paul writes in Romans 8, 24 and 25, For in this hope we are saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope for who hopes for what he sees. But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. See, in a world where we want it now, like Veruca Salt in, in Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, we want everything and we want it now or else we chuck a hissy fit. Sometimes we just need a little more patience. But there's a second half to this proverb, and we've got to look at that, that as well. Proverbs often works in, in pairs, uh, and the second part usually balances out the first part. And so, yes, hope deferred makes the heart sick, but a longing fulfilled or desire fulfilled is a tree of life. And, and when, when, you're, when you've been waiting for something for so long and then it finally comes true, Proverbs 13, 12 says, it's like a tree of life. There's a desire that is fulfilled. Some uh, Sunday afternoons back in the days when I was fit my, um, and, and after church, my brothers and I and a few mates would go down uh, to the local footy ground and we would, uh, we would have a bit of a, a kick and a bit of a run around. Uh, it was great fun. And, and depending on, on how many of us there were, we would, we'd play a small game in, you know, like in half the ground. Uh, one time... Uh, one of the guys went up to take a big hanger, which is a, a mark in, in football, right? Um, but as he flew, he forgot that he wasn't a cat. And so he didn't land on his feet. Instead, he, he put his arms out. And, and as he landed, his shoulder went pop. And he lay on the ground, <laughs> writhing in pain. Um, now, I don't know how many of you have ever seen a, a dislocated limb before. It just doesn't look right. It, it doesn't look healthy. Um, now, I use this example because, because hope, um, hope deferred dislocates us from our desires being fulfilled. A, a dislocated limb is, is actually still connected. It's still a part of you, but it's just not um, being used for its purpose. It, it causes pain. It, 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 de it debilitates a person. Um, until it's put back in place and the pain eases. You know, for, for our poor mate, he, he was uh, the one of the times this happened, and I say one because there are a few times that this happened to him. Um, no matter what we did, whether we were, we were pulling or pushing or twisting or laughing, um, no matter what we did, we just couldn't get it back in. And so the Ambos had to come and took him to the hospital where they fixed him up. You know, we've all experienced hope, uh, a, a, a deferral of hope, a loss of hope. And that's not what we need because that's not what we were created for. But we've all been disappointed, we've all been worried, we've all been betrayed, we've all been criticised. None of us um, like it when these things happen to us and, and so we get, sometimes we get blown off course. But how we navigate in these times, with the Lord's help, allows us to advance against the wind. God helps us to, to navigate our way through these adverse conditions, like a sailboat sort of positioning its sail so it can advance against the wind. Slowly but surely, you, you move forward. And as we do this with the Lord, it comes through the promises in His Word through the biblical mandates the, the, and the commands that he has given. It, it's, it's learning to trust him when, the, when, when there are things that, that we can't control, things we can't explain. Trusting him in those moments is where our desires are, are, are fulfilled and we feel like we're really living. See, hope deferred is what robs us of our joy and peace, but hope realized or fulfilled is what gives us gives us lives of, of, of purpose. Not only does that imply that there is, is something better in the future, but it also it's actually possible to go out and achieve something today. When, when people prattle on about needing to find their life's purpose, what they really mean is that they, they, no, they are no longer clear what matters to them. What's worthy use of their limited time here on earth. In short, what they'd hope for. But you see, God is the God of hope because he is the God of promise. 
You know, there are over 7,000 promises in the Scriptures. Time and time and time again, God promises and delivers on His promises of hope and joy and peace because He loves us. We see it back in the very beginning in Genesis 3, the promise of, of a Redeemer. God had, had, had that promise all ready for us before there was a problem. Everything was thought of ahead of time and he, and he set the stage for us to be restored to him. He set the stage for us to be forgiven of sin, to be healed in our sense of who we are and our purpose. In Proverbs 13, 12, hope deferred make the heart sick. But then the other side of the line, but a desire fulfilled is a tree of life. See, the promises of God fulfill our desire and they give us life. You know, the, the tree of life is mentioned three times in the Bible. It's, it's in Genesis, it's in, here in Proverbs, and it's in Revelation. And so to my mind, Genesis speaks about the tree as... Um, as I guess the tree of life that, that was. Proverbs refers to the, the tree of life that is. Revelation refers to what is to come. But as we jump back to the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve take, take the fruit from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. They disobey God. Sin enters the world. And an angel guards the tree of life. The thought behind this idea is that... Is that if I now become a sinner and break covenant with God, if I, if I were to eat from the, the, the tree of life, it won't fix my problem, but instead it will make me eternally a sinner incapable of receiving the hope of redemption. So if desired, realized is the tree of life, then what is that saying? You know, I would say that that, that it is saying that, that part of our eternal purpose is to experience fulfilled desires that God has for us. To experience fulfilled hopes and dreams. Now sin frustrates this and we lose hope when we defer the hope that Jesus has given us. See, God gives us and, and promises us. He doesn't tease us or he doesn't put up false hope doesn't do that so that we don't crash and burn because he's a loving father who gives us promises that inspire us to hope. See, promises are the invitation of God into a relationship with him where we work together to, to see things happen on this earth that reveal who he is, who reveal his nature. When we're in this relationship where in, in cooperation we see his purposes lived, you know, in and 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 through our lives. You know, God could easily set himself up so that everyone on earth could see him, so that everyone could hear him, but he's chosen not to do that because he is a loving father that chooses to work through his children. And by doing so, we live these fulfilled lives, knowing then that, that everything we do makes a difference. Every time you encourage someone, you make a difference. Every time you pray for someone, you make a difference. Every time you, you cook a meal for someone, you make a difference. Every time you ring someone on the phone to see how they're going, you are making a difference. Every time you don't defer hope, you are proving that God is a loving, wonderful, caring, heavenly Father who, who wants each and every one of us to live the purposes and the life that God would have us live. And so this, this hope that we're given by God, it starts with that relationship with Jesus Christ. Paul writes in Romans 5, he says, Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him, we have also obtained access by faith into this grace in which we stand. And we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. And not only that... But we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit whom he's given us. Is that the hope that you have? 
Is that the hope that you want? Because that's the hope that you need. And so why don't we this morning put our hope and faith in Jesus Christ? You see, we all reach a point in our lives where we're, we're left with a choice. Now, the, the Lord has done everything that is needed for us to arrive at this point. But we can choose to hope or we can choose not to. Some of us have chosen in the past to defer our hope and we've let go of, of, of what God has had in mind for us because we, we haven't been patient, we haven't waited for the Lord. In Deuteronomy 30, we read of a dialogue with God outlining his plans to bless the people if they follow his commands and live for him. This is what it says in, in verse 19. It says, I have set before you life and death, blessing and curse. Therefore choose life that you and your offspring may live, loving the Lord your God, obeying his voice and holding fast to him. For he is your life and length of days that you may dwell in the land that the Lord swore to your fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give them. So the Lord tells them, he says, choose life over death. We, we don't have the, the, the luxury of choosing never to have challenges or adversity, but we can choose how we respond to them. And I want to I close this morning with a story. It's, it's about a man named William Carey. William Carey is known as the, the father of modern missions. He wanted to translate the Bible into as many in Indian languages as, poss as possible. And early in, in 1832, a colleague discovered flames that were engulfing their printing room. And they tried to fight the fire and put it out, but everything was lost. The next day, another missionary went to Carey's location and he told Carey, he says, I, think, uh, I can think of no easy way to break this news. The print shop burned to the ground last night. Carey was stunned. His, his complete library was burned to the ground, including dictionaries and grammar books and Bibles, as well as the typesets for, for 14 of the languages he was translating. The work of years gone in a moment, he said. Carey took little time to mourn. The loss is heavy, he wrote, but we are not discouraged. Indeed, the work has already begun again in every language. We are cast down, but not in despair. News of, of the fire um, catapulted Carey into instant fame in England. Funds were raised and volunteers offered help. And by the end of that year, portions of scripture, even entire Bibles, had, had been issued for 44 languages and dialects. So the secret to, to Carey's success is that he never deferred hope. There are, there are grave difficulties on every hand, he, he wrote, and more are looming ahead, but we must go forward. See, God works in our circumstances, and I'm sure that, that Carey would have, would have thought, is this really worth it in the end? After the fire burnt through his entire work. But he didn't defer hope. Instead, he chose to continue to trust in the Lord. He allowed the Lord to, to turn his desires into a tree of life. And as he described, gave him a song in the night. You can have the same. You can choose the same. You don't have to have it all together to hope. But to get it together, you will need hope. As so my prayer for us this morning is that we choose to put our trust in the Lord Jesus. I know for some of you, there are things that you've been waiting for for a long time. There are things you've been praying for for a long time. There's things that you've been believing for for a long time. And the word for you this morning is to continue to be patient. Don't defer your hope. Because that will only make you sick. But give your desires to the Lord and allow Him to breathe life into your situation. Let's pray. 
Our Father, this morning we have this amazing picture of your goodness to us as a loving Father. We have this amazing sense of, of, of what Jesus Christ has done for us, what he has won for us, the, the redemption that we have, the hope that he has given us because of his death and resurrection. And, and Father, this morning there are, there are some of us who, who, are, who are still waiting for you to answer, who are still hoping for things to come to fruition in our lives. Help us, Father, not to defer hope. Help us to put our hope and our trust in you. Father, may we continue to look to you. May we continue to move forward with you. You are the God of miracles. You are the God of life. You are the God who works in our circumstances. We see so often through the scriptures and even through um, people's lives that, God, you work and that you continue to work because you love us. And so this morning I pray that we would be encouraged to continue to trust you. And so we thank you for who you are, Father. We thank you for your great love for us. We thank you for the hope that we receive in Jesus Christ. May we never defer what he has given us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks, church.
Blessed be your name, Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name, Lord Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. Turn back to praise When the darkness closes in, Lord Still I will say Blessed be the name of the Lord Blessed be your name Blessed be the name of the Lord Blessed be your glorious name Thanks, Church, for the privilege of being with you in your in living rooms or wherever you're watching us from. Um, just a reminder about tonight that come back and, and engage with us again. And again, through the week, just go on the website, go on Facebook and, and have a look to see what kind of um, interaction that we've got happening during the week. Um, everyone, have a great week and thanks again for joining us.